So the radicals have even got a hold of the dictionary now. That's right. Merriam-Webster, you know, once very respected, now looked upon as just shameful. We'll get into the details here, especially though the prophetic significance of this change, of this definition, because now a lot of people are going to talk about the prophetic significance of it. They're going to talk about, yeah, the radical stuff and the, you know, the Marxist stuff, which is all true. But here at this channel, we like to go in depth into the prophetic, into the spiritual. We like to use our spiritual eyes to truly dissect these situations. And we'll get into all of it here in less than 10 seconds. First, guys, if you could, if YT lets you, try and hit that like button for me. Also, very important, you please share the video, hit the bell, subscribe, or wear the glasses because I'm blind. I invite you, if you'd like to make a generous donation to the ministry, see more information in the description. So, Merriam-Webster, yeah, they caved. And this is bad. With all of this talk lately, remember, we have a Supreme Court justice now who can't define what a woman is because they're not a biologist. Well, thankfully, Merriam-Webster has come in now and made it so that Katanji Brown Jackson does not have to become a biologist to know now what a woman is, what a female is. Now, she could just simply open up the dictionary and say, oh, this is what it really is. And so they've made this change. They have now added a new phrase to the term female. Yeah, it's, it's not what you and I know to be female. No, no, no. Instead, it's now anybody who has a gender identity that is opposite of male. <laughs> if you would have seen this in the dictionary, not even 10 years ago, you would have laughed and said, gender what? Identity what? What is this? Yeah, you're living in 1984. And they've basically done the same thing for the word male and put that as anybody who has a gender identity that is opposite of female. Oh, and yes, those in the trans community celebrated the decision by Merriam-Webster to make this official change in the dictionary as they rewrite what it is that God set forth from the very beginning. This is what people don't want to talk about, okay? These are attacks against God's creation, his foundation. And everyone's always saying, right, These, all of these different groups, these companies, they're all afraid, right, of the woke crowd. They're afraid of these activists, right, the rainbow activists, the woke activists. They're afraid of all these different groups. But the one that they're not afraid of, they have no fear of whatsoever, is the Lord. And the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. They don't go into these decisions thinking, oh, wait a minute, I mean, but the Bible clearly says this. Why am I going to cave to a bunch of, you know, nobodies here in this woke community who want to redefine gender and all this stuff. Why would we do that? They have no fear of the Lord. It's a generation that has been raised to where they're told, eh, God doesn't really matter. Oh, there's many different ways to heaven, many different paths. Jesus, I mean, Jesus and everything and salvation. Oh, who needs that? They don't fear God. And the devil... What is his whole goal? To pervert, to twist everything that God created for what? His purpose. To get back at the Lord. And he's got all these people on his side who are coming on board the bandwagon, right? Don't think I forgot about these churches either who also have difficulty naming what a female is and who have compromised and cracked their door open just enough to where that junk went in there and now they can't go back. Now they're just full steam ahead with the woke progressive nonsense. There's another word I could use there, but I think you know what I mean. Again, even in the church, no fear of the Lord. 
They fear other people. They fear not being accepted. They fear being called names. And yet they don't remember that on the day of judgment, they stand before God and God alone. These people will not be there. Look, who am I? I'm some blind guy on YouTube. I don't have that many people that watch me. I'm not popular. I'm not fancy. I'm not flashy. I don't have all these different graphics and this and that. Okay. But I am on here spitting spiritual truth is what I'm doing. For however many people listen, whether it's 10 people or two people, whoever, it doesn't matter. But it needs to be said. And it just, it irks me to no end that not even the churches, you can't even recognize them anymore. You know, you would, you know, Miriam Webster, you would, I mean, even, yeah, they've been established, they've been around for so long, that, you know, but, you know, them caving to this sort of thing, okay, you kind of get it a little bit with the culture and everything, the way it's going on, but with the churches. But I'll say this, large part of this is because the church has compromised so much. Don't think that others haven't seen that. Other outsiders haven't seen that and said, well, I mean, my gosh, if the church is allowing things that they would never allow to happen in their in their sanctuaries, well, huh, I mean, it must be okay. Christians don't lead anymore. In fact, they are being led as lambs to the slaughter. It's exactly what has happened. What is Satan trying to come after right now? The family. Who is he trying to erase? Women. <laughs> you can't create unless you have two. Right? Male and a female. Everything with the road decision with the court, right? I mean, that was some good news, but for so long, I mean, <laughs> how often did we did we hear about the horrific stories about how many little ones were lost because of it? And now they just move on to the next thing. Redefine what it means to be female. Oh, it's in the dictionary now. And don't think that they're not going to try to rewrite the Bible either. I mean, they already have in many, in many ways as it is. But I'm talking about even more radical even than that. I don't know... What other signs you need to see that we are living in the last days and that this thing is getting ready to be wrapped up very quickly. The, the people out there right now that are just completely unwilling to repent and turn from this wickedness, they have no clue about the wrath of God that awaits them. Yes, God is long suffering. Yes, God loves them, but that patience is going to wear out at some point here very, very soon. And I can tell you this right now, for anybody listening to me right now, if you're someone that is in fact on that progressive left wing side and you are all about this stuff, it's not going to mean a thing if you unfortunately have to face the wrath of the Lord for your disobedience and for your continual ways in these lifestyles that oppose what the Lord has created from the very beginning. You can mock me, you can laugh at me, you can because none of that really matters. It, it really doesn't. Remember, we all stand before God at the end of the day, including myself. You won't be there. So you can laugh all you want. Poke fun, say things in the comment section. I don't care. But your eternity matters. At least it should. I'll leave it there. I'll put some more information on this for you guys in the description. Also, if you enjoy my daily content here talking about end time Bible prophecy headlines, I mentioned it earlier, you can help make a generous donation here to our ministry to help support. You can click the link to my PayPal below or sign up on my Patreon for five bucks a month. When you do, 
you will receive all the alerts for all the content I put out. Don't rely on YT for any of the notifications. They barely send them anymore. Trust me on that. You'll miss a ton of my stuff if that's how you view me only through alerts. Through Patreon, you'll get it all. Plus, you can leave your comments there completely censorship-free and send direct messages. Again, all the links are down below. A big, big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity greatly appreciated. Now, I am not done just yet. I don't leave any video here without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Mention eternity, and this is your chance right now to accept Christ into your life. This is a prayer that you can do in your own words, but I'll give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. But let me tell you the good news. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin. Not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles, habits, anything in your life that goes against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you'll ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this down below. As I mentioned, you guys can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.